Reviews, the biggest news, the what's new, and the who's who. Welcome to the Daily Gamer Podcast with Joe Mango and James. Right, I have got you, Tim. I've got all the big questions for you now. Mm. We've done all the fun stuff. That's over. Now yep. time for the uh, the nitty gritty. Time for work. Um, yeah, exactly. So, uh, Tim, you are the head of marketing for Unix Gaming. Why mm. don't you tell us what is Unix Gaming? Uh, well, I mean, I guess the best way to describe us is a ecosystem for Web3 developers and Web3 games. Cool. Um, the uh, Web3 gaming space is complicated at the moment. Mm. Um, it's It's new. New things are always complicated, and um, get, developers are struggling sometimes to find right. Maybe they've found, they've got a great game, but they're struggling to find community. Uh, maybe they've got a great community, but they're struggling to finish their game. And uh, yeah, we provide the kind of resources they need to see their game to completion, so make sure that they can have a successful title. Yeah, in, okay. in the blockchain gaming space. Okay, cool. So they basically kind of come to you. And do, are you like um, a consultant for them? Like, so you'll like talk them through the process, or do they like go onto your website and they do it through that? Like, how does that work if they want to kind of you know make their game into a blockchain game or make a blockchain game in the, in the first place? Yeah, so we've got a number of ways we can assist. We've got a platform which we're building, which we're pretty proud of, Own.gg, which is a gaming platform that allows like gamers to find Web three games, like cool. really great blockchain games. Um, and you can think of it like Steam for ga- for for blockchain gaming. Um, we're not the first to use that term, but we're working really hard to make something that's like really good. Mm. Um, and so that will be the first port of call. Um, we also have a development team. Uh, they can they at like the peak they're at 120 strong, and they it's it's quite a diverse team. We've got wow. blockchain economists, artists, game designers. Very cool. You know, the whole shebang, and they can help um, developers do whatever it is they need. You need um, NFTs in your game, and you can't figure out how to make it work. You need your tokenomics sorted out. You need um, like the more development stuff on the actual game front. We can mm. help you with that. So it really depends what you need. We would like forward you to the right the right people. Very cool. Are, are a lot of developers now using like Unreal Engine four and five to create their blockchain games? Or yeah, I mean. I think Unreal Engine and Unity are probably the most mm. used. Um, Unity is just like the most popular game engine at the you know because it's very easy to use. It's mm. very user friendly. Um, Unity can uh, I mean Unreal Engine can sometimes be a bit overwhelming mm. because it's a more high production value game where uh, or engine. So you need like usually you kind of feel like you need higher quality production assets, mm. which means more time, more budget, whereas Unity is more... You need a better PC. <laughs> yeah. So Unity, you can you can make anything. I mean, and so that's that's quite a popular one. Um, the other one is Unreal Engine. Um, Unreal Engine is also quite popular because Epic um, are allowing Web3 games or blockchain yeah. games... And Steam on are not. Epic, ...on their platform, exactly. Yeah. So whereas Steam does not. So it makes sense to build a game on an engine... That they're going to support you. Yeah, they're going to support you as well on the platform. They have no problem with blockchain games. So very cool. And these uh, gaming developers, mm-hmm. um, have they already like built kind of let's say normal regular games by this point, or um, are they kind of going, hey, we're going to just build blockchain games? Mm-hmm. Or sorry, yeah. So the, the first one is like, have they already built a game that, that they put out, let's say on Steam, and now they're like, actually, we want to make it blockchain game because that that looks pretty cool. Mm. Or are they just kind of starting from scratch, going uh, into blockchain? It's both. Um, the, I would say the ma- the vast majority are will have a team that consists of at least some veteran developers mm. who've got the chops and who've like built games before. Because if if you don't if you don't have that down, then not only do you need to learn blockchain, mm. but you also need to learn game development. Yeah, which is, yeah. I mean, that's well, I have enough. seen a lot of people actually like I've seen a, you know a lot of projects blockchain gaming. Whereas people that are like, oh, blockchain is really cool. Let's make a game, but they've never made a game before, yeah. and they think, oh, we can make this game in six months, yeah. and. Yeah, they they just have not built a game. No, in six exactly. <laughs> it's, it's it is it is really a mix of veteran developers who say, "Well, blockchain is a cool field. We want to expand into it." So they do that, and then there's others who've made blockchain projects. Mm. Often it's like NFT collections, and they're trying to find out what utility to add, and they're like, "Can we add a game?" Yeah, and so they build a game. So do you help? So if someone came to you with an NFT project, could you help them build a game? Absolutely. Uh, we're we're doing. Uh, 
something like that on a project i unfortunately can't name but it's, it's okay yeah i understand <laughs> it's 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 a really <laughs> cool one but yeah i mean look if you have if you have an nft project and you're trying to find more utility mm. you know we can do other <laughs> trying f- to find any utility <laughs> yeah you're finding if, you know you want a reason to people to, to yeah, pick it up yeah. and use it and i mean that's the same for anything right you need to find incentive for users to return to or uh, really like fall in love with your project so we can absolutely help you attach a game to yeah. an existing nft or if you're like I want an NFT collection and I want a game. I don't know how to make other. Mm. Then you can still come to us. And if you've got a great idea and you've got... And you've got the money. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's the thing. Like, we're happy to work with the teams, but we quite often get, you know, calls from people who have like, I had a dream and I wanted to make a game. <laughs> and it's like, okay, well, you know, you know, what have you got so far? I had a dream. Yeah. And then it's like, okay, maybe we can't help you. But yeah, if, you yeah. have, if you have the... If you have some, you know, some amount of like development experience or you've got a project that needs assistance you know there's we can help with you know whatever it is you need yeah no that's really cool honestly it seems um like uh, there needs to be more of you yeah um because yeah just ha- no one's cracked it yet no nope. no one's cracked that whole um you know a formula for making a a blockchain game that everyone's like oh my goodness i mean axie infinity kind of did but then they kind of messed up their tokenomics right and yeah. then it kind of went a bit downhill well i mean the thing about and everything like, went you know down in value and stuff right yeah i mean the problem with with uh axie infinity and you know it's still i mean all all credit to the guys who made who built it because it's it's it was incredibly successful it still is relatively successful compared to everything else in the space mm, that's but true it's uh, the I think the biggest issue is that like play to earn as an idea is quite difficult. It's a boring game. Yeah, I mean the thing is the the idea is that players are rewarded uh, tokens which have real world value because mm. cryptocurrency. Um, they get rewarded cryptocurrency or NFTs that can be like sold for value. Mm. They get rewarded for playing the game. But in in order to do that, you kind of have to build in grind. It's the same way like if you have a free-to-play game and you want people to buy microtransactions and stuff, you have to give them a reason to do it. So if the game is really easy to finish and win without spending yeah. money, why would they spend money? Mm. So you have to kind of put grind into your game. And so what happens is inevitably like play-to-earn games become less play-to-earn and more job-to-earn. Yeah. Because you do six hours grind mm. every day to earn and there's no incentive for players to like enjoy and experience so, and yeah. put back into the game. I feel like that is kind of just the downfall of most blockchain games. They're just trying to make money off the game instead of making a game that is... uh, Either they're trying to make money for the game or they're just trying to make the game for people to also make money that also makes them money. Mm -hmm. Instead of just making a game that's just fun with the added incentive to make money. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, like, if you... You know, when um, when it comes to a game, at the end of the day, whether you're making it a blockchain game, you're making a more traditional game, which we kind of call like Web Two games. Yeah. Um, whatever it is, if it's not fun, it's it's yeah. not it's not going to last because the only way to get people to come back to your game, if it's not fun, is to invest into it, to put yeah. money in, into it, to get people to come back, and that's just like a sinking yeah. ship, right? So, so um, I interviewed um, a couple months ago PG. He's the head of gaming for the Algorand Foundation. Mm-hmm. Um, I asked him this question. I want to ask you the same sure. question. Okay. Do you? Th- I want to see if they're the same answer or a different answer, right? So, do you think the first big blockchain game AAA title success is going to come? Not okay. Not to say AAA title, but first big successful game that has got people going. Actually, this looks pretty cool. This blockchain gaming mm-hmm. is it going to come from a AAA studio or is it going to come from a little indie studio? That's a good question. Um, I think the thing is, so I'll, I'll put it this way. It's possible it could come from an indie studio. The magic, one of the kind of magic like elements of blockchain gaming is that it's much easier to fundraise, which means you don't have to rely on publishers who mm. take who take control, who can often take control of your project, mm. which means that developers can sometimes have more creative control, which is good in the blockchain space. So it could be a blockchain, I mean, it could be an indie developer mm. who manages to get a big windfall through fundraising and makes like this incredible game mm. that's um, really popular. It could also be that they just stumble upon something really good. Like Minecraft wasn't started, wasn't created initially to be huge. Mm. It was initially created as a, you know, like a project and then it kind For of sure. up. So that's, that's one way. But, more likely than not, it's going to take money. And like at the end of the day, um, 
some of the biggest games at the moment, like I know there are a lot of really successful indie games, but that takes a lot of work and, and um, hard work, and it's not something you can guarantee. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's you, you kind of have to roll the dice, um, whereas the other solution is to throw a lot of money in it mm-hmm. because marketing is a thing, you know, making sure that the right people see the game is a thing and making sure the right team builds it. And if you have a successful franchise already and you build blockchain into it so yeah you make so if ubisoft were like hey we got assassin's creed a new assassin's creed coming out but it's blockchain yeah i mean that might kind of do it maybe but uh ubisoft has tried this once before and uh it backfired Mm. because what you need to be careful about doing is not making it so that the the reason you've integrated blockchain is so that you can make more revenue Mm. gamers are pretty fickle about that sort of thing and they're not going to forgive you what you need to do is use blockchain to make your game better for gamers. If you make yeah. it better for your bottom line, gamers are not going to, there's no way they're going to allow it to, mm. to work. If you make it better for gamers, if it's something that takes gaming to the next level, then absolutely you could. And there are games now in the more traditional gaming space that are pretty close to being blockchain games. Yeah. Um, so like anything on Steam that has an active, that uses the marketplace, like mm. Counter-Strike and Dota, players can yeah. earn items or buy items and then later trade them and yeah. sell them to others. And there are people who make money and they buying sell and selling items in those games. And that's not that far removed from what a blockchain game is. The yeah. only difference is it's not on the blockchain, it's in Steam. Yeah, so yeah. it could be done. If, if you were the first guys to say, we're going to make League of Legends for blockchain, and it was as good as... It, it, that's the thing is a lot of yeah. developers are making the uh, MOBA Battle Royale kind of, or MOBA yeah. of, of... And they're like, but, it, but it's not as good. It's like... But at the end of the day, gamers are going to play the best one, not the one that earns them the most money. Mm. If the if being able to recoup some of your costs you invest in, you invest into playing the game or being able to get something out of it for all the time you've invested in, on top of a great game, yeah, then you got a winner. It's a great answer. That is a great is that answer. What they, uh, no, no. Said. So uh, PG from uh, the Algram Foundation, he said he thinks a the the AAA titles won't get on board until an uh, indie studio have a miraculous success mm. and then they go okay we're ready now yeah because uh, i guess his reasoning behind it which i do get is a lot of triple like you know you said ubisoft were trying to do some stuff um any gaming studio that has tried to say hey we're going to do blockchain stuff everyone's gone uh, no go away uh, gross yeah. we don't want that um so yeah i think triple a titles are probably just waiting aren't they they're, they're waiting for more people to get on board with blockchain, mm. which is probably going to have to come from, uh, I mean, indie developers, but well-funded indie mm-hmm. developers, if that makes sense, mm-hmm. um, before the AAA titles, Ubisoft, EA, whatever, are going to go, okay, I think the market is ready for us now. Yeah. I mean, there are a couple developers or AAA studios that are cowboys in the space that mm. may be willing to give it a go. Yeah. So... It's weird to say this Valve because they're the ones who banned blockchain games from Steam. Yeah. But, you know, there's more reasons to do it than just blockchain's the devil. Mm. Like, we don't like it. It's that there were a lot of, like, people taking advantage of players and users. And the easiest way to rectify that is to just wholesale ban everything. Yeah. Figure out the best way to onboard and then do it slowly and properly. Um, And so if anyone's going to do it... You know, blockchain is, you know, synonymous for... Hackers, yeah. And I mean, the thing is that blockchain gives rug pulls. blockchain gives users a lot of power, and anything where users have a lot of power means there's a lot of room to make mistakes. Yeah. So, for example, the idea behind blockchain is that instead of like an assets being primarily controlled by, say, a bank, yeah. you control them. But you know, banks don't just sit on your money; they also put a lot of security measures in place, and they also have a lot of like precautionary stuff to protect you. Whereas if you're doing it yourself. And you got it all under your mattress. Yeah, and you lose it. <laughs> you know, it's, it's on you. So yeah, no, yeah. that's a it's a really good way to put it. Um, so the new platform mm-hmm. you've got coming out, owned dot gg. That's it. Um, when can we expect that? Have you got like a a, a timeline of when it's going to be like fully operational? Yeah, so we are aiming to do a, a beta in uh, late or mid to late March, and then okay. a launch in like early Q two. And are the games that are going to be on it, are they going to be, do you have to pay for them? 
Is it free games? Do you have to buy an NFT to play it, or is it dependent on the game? No, so we don't we don't have a, any prescriptions for the games that are going to be on it. We're what we're doing is we're just going and looking for the best games in the space and saying we want you on the platform because we want gamers to find you. Um, we don't want to prescribe to them how they should um, make their game because yeah. it's really the final decision needs to be up to the players. I like this method of play. So I'm going to keep doing it. And yeah. if more people do it, then that's the the, the strategy they'll win out. Yeah. Because obviously the issue with Axie Infinity, especially when I first heard about it, someone was like, oh, have you seen this blockchain gaming thing? Axie Infinity. And I was like, oh, what's that? And I got like, you know, started researching everything. And then it was like, you have to buy an NFT. And the, like the NFTs were like, my friend was like, oh yeah, I've just bought one for like a thousand dirhams so I can start playing this game. Mm. And I'm like, well, that's like $250, $300 for a, to play a game. Mm-hmm. That seems a bit weird. Oh, you can earn money from it. And then when you actually look at how much money you can earn, it's like not a lot unless you get really lucky. Mm. It's like a couple dollars a day or something. Yeah. No, a couple dollars a week, I think. Mm. Um, which is like, well, that's not really worth it. So, I mean, personally, if someone can figure out a way to make money from their game with it just being free to play mm. and you can earn NFTs whilst playing it, but keeping the economy going. There's, there's so many factors, it's complicated. right? It is complicated. So someone will sometime nail yeah. that. And and there are there are some games in the space that are doing some really interesting things. Yeah. So for example, there's a game called Delicium. Okay. And what they're using is they're using the blockchain. They do have the kind of more standard mechanics like they're creating, I guess, what you could tentatively call a metaverse, but it's not really. It's more mm. like an open world where players can like use the power of the blockchain to like own the things they're doing. Yeah. But the main thing they're using is they're by using the blockchain, they can actually decentralize ownership of the whole game itself. Mm. And so you can go to Delicium and say, hey, I want to manage my own Delicium. And they can kind of give you the access to it to host your own Delicium, mm. kind of like you would host a game server, but yeah. with the blockchain mechanics tied into it. And that's where they're using blockchain more so than you need this NFT to play the game. Yeah. Very cool. And how is it going with, uh, obviously, different games on different blockchains? Mm -hmm. um, is is that a difficulty for your platform? Or does it have to be on one blockchain? Or is it different blockchain games on different blockchains mm -hmm. are on your platform? No, no. So any game is welcome. And in fact, the one thing we kind of think is a key uh, winning uh, strategy for us is we're not just focusing on Web3 or blockchain games. The goal is to inevitably incorporate all games. And that's because we want to drop this like blockchain moniker. We want to say games. Games are for gamers. Ah. And gaming is it, like, you can be, oh, I feel like playing a blockchain game today. Or I don't feel like playing a job. Same way yeah. you would maybe want to play a free-to-play game or you want to play a game that you you know bought mm. up front. And so we, we're just going to incorporate that post-launch. It won't be straight away. Um, but the other thing is we our primary like motivation for building the platform is helping uh, gamers find great games and so we couldn't really like restrict games by blockchain because there's a lot of great games on different blockchains yeah and so any game can be on our platform but if you want to integrate your marketplace into our platform so that you can have items traded directly from the platform then you kind of have to look at the blockchain we're gonna make it as wide as we can we're not like limiting it so we you have your everyone own, on. you have your own marketplace mm -hmm. well we've got a we've got a marketplace you can think of it as a front end it's an aggregator mm. so we aggregate everyone's items we are focusing at the beginning we're going to be able to support like um, immutable X and polygon out the gates but we're going to add as many as we can we're we're thinking of this more as like an open source uh, approach to having all the uh, as many like great blockchains on because the thing we want is we don't want i mean obviously we want great blockchain partners mm. but the thing we really want is great games and so they come from a wide spectrum of blockchain so we need to support as many as we can i like it very cool um just one thing that popped into my head mm. um i saw i went to uh, an event a couple months ago and i met this guy who's doing a game called decimated or decimate.net Mm. something like that or yeah something like that um anyway it's a blockchain game that they're developing they've had a lot of people put money into it like millions of dollars mm -hmm. and all of the uh kind of developers have all come from like the ubisofts or the mm. other AAA titles and i gotta be honest it looks very cool mm. very like cyberpunk-esque mm. um you know shooting whatever um 
but yeah, I didn't know if you had if you had seen that one. Deci- uh, I think it's called Decimate or Decimated.net. Um, and I thought that that was quite a cool project because the guy who was running it, he's an ex gaming developer at a big AAA studio. He's been doing it for like 20 years. And he's basically got money and then started recruiting mm-hmm. some big people. Yeah. So that got me quite excited. That got me going, okay, maybe this is what's going to change the game. Yeah. You know, someone putting the money up to just hire these developers mm-hmm. that are already talented and already, mm-hmm. you know, like you said earlier, veterans of the of the developing well, world. That the thing is with with blockchain gaming because it's one of the kind of inherent powers of blockchain gaming is not just the games you make, but how you raise funding mm. rather than having to be solely reliant on um, publishers to front it, which means that they have creative control a lot of the time. You can raise funds um, through like fix, effectively like community fundraising, and you can then have control to make whatever game you want, but you're not as limited by funding like as uh, more traditional indie games would be. Yeah. So there's been like I've uh, I've seen quite a few. Uh, blockchain games which like <laughs> quite a few of them I'm not allowed to talk about just yet but I can tell you they yeah. are you know they're, they're built on cutting edge engines like uh, Unreal 5 they've got all the the whistles the bells and whistles and they look like they look fantastic yeah. and their goal for a lot of them is um, to get gamers in and to let them enjoy the game and only if they're kind of like bought into it then kind of introduce them slowly to the blockchain space mm. so so you can play the game just yeah. normally yeah and then if you want to get into the blockchain elements of that game mm. then you can you can deep dive into it a little bit more but if you want you can just play the game like normal yeah i mean there's so many different like variations so again it's not just about like what games you make but it's like how do you onboard users and get them yeah. to buy into your games um you know we've seen developers do from you need to pay up front to get NFT to play the game to you play the game as much as you want, never touch the, the blockchain stuff if you don't want to, or it's a mix of both. It's, it really just depends. It's the same as like some games are free to play, but there's purchasable elements. Others don't really require you to purchase anything. Mm. Some, you know, it's one-time upfront payment and you play it and then you're done with it. So, yeah. Very cool. Awesome. Well, I feel like we could sit and chat here for a while, yeah. uh, but we probably should wrap it up at some point. Sure. Um, but if you do want to go check it all out, you can go to unixgaming.org. That's it. Or you can go to owned.gg. How owned do you spell owned? Like O W N E D. So okay, like yeah, the normal so, way to spell it. Yeah, the, the cool. hashtag we're going with is get owned. Get and owned. It's a sort of a, it's a good it's a good owned to get. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Usually when that happens to you, it's it's not it's a good a bad thing, thing. But this but is a, this is a good one. Yeah. So you can own your assets, that yeah, sort exactly. of thing. Yeah, That's I like it. it. Okay, cool. Owned.gg mm-hmm. and unixgaming.org. That's Check it. it out, Tim. Thank you so much. No Head problem. of marketing at uh, Unix Gaming, and I'm sure you'll be back uh, uh, again in a in a few months, maybe. Yeah, with well, some more exciting things. Have me, right? so. Awesome. Thanks, Tim. Thanks. Yeah, yeah.